All the foundation element feature are only available when Story Zero plan is active. That is, you can only insert foundation elements in Story Zero. Double click on Story Zero in the structure tree to switch the plan view to Story Zero. Effectively, we are now looking at the column and wall stump below the ground level. You would find it helpful to display column forces on the plan view. Go to Review tab, Visual Interrogation, Column Plan Display. Check Axial Loads. Check Bottom. Under Loading, check G, Q and First Load Combination, G plus Q Factored. Click OK and the axial loads will be shown on the plan view. Before designing pad footing, let us first review the foundation materials. Go to Building Setout, Edit Material. Select Foundation Floor. Review the concrete grade and grade of steel. Click Grade 500, Edit, Next Rebar Diameters. Footing and Pile Cap share the same rebar diameter setting. Pick and choose rebar sizes to be used in design. Cancel. Cancel again. Cancel again. Multiple select all the columns by holding down the control key. Right click, insert pad footing, maximize the dialog. Before designing any foundation elements, let us review the foundation design settings. The general tab is for pad footing, strip footing and rafter mat foundation. Soil unit weight is used to calculate the surcharge weight on the foundation by multiplying with surcharge height. The surcharge height is automatically calculated by the program based on the top of the foundation level and the ground floor level. Ultimate soil strength factor is the factor used to multiply the allow stress of soil to become the ultimate soil stress. The reason is foundation design is based on factored load combination, not on factored or service combination. These options is specifically for finite element foundation analysis, which is not applicable to rigid pad footing design. Lean concrete thickness is used in foundation drawings, it does not affect the analysis or design of foundation elements. Strip footing cantilever length is the default extension for the edge of the column for strip footing. These settings controls the display of footing label and rebars on plan view. Click on Design tab, which controls the design parameters of pad footing and raft foundation. Default pad footing can be rectangular or square. Change it to square. Minimum footing width, depth, size and depth design step, and concrete cover can be modified. Analysis source defaults to building analysis model. Alternatively, you can use the FE raft foundation analysis model. Minimum moment coefficients ensures that a minimum design moment is automatically calculated. Steel bar selection. Minimum steel ratio and minimum bar spacing defaults to code requirements. If you check the box, you can override the defaults and manually key in figures. Maximum bar spacing and spacing step is user-defined, hence review this carefully. Footing reinforcement. There are two choices, with BOB, bending of bars, and without. Select minimum main steel bar size and distribution bar sizes. Use top bars ensures top rebars are also provided. Click OK to save and close the settings dialog. Selection. Click on any row to select it. Hold down control key for multiple select. Select slash clear all and reverse selection icons can be useful as well. Design. Check design will only check and not change the footing size and rebars. Check design will check the adequacy of the footing and only redesign if it fails. Redesign all will redesign all the footings fresh with the current settings. Grouping. Columns can be grouped to yield a single footing design using the grouping options. Hold down control key and select the first two column labels. Click group selected. Ungroup will break up previously grouped columns. Select option redesign all, since this is the first time we insert the footing. Click design all to begin batch design. All the footings depth, size and rebars will be automatically designed. The design status will change from red crosses to green ticks. Apply design combinations. By default, the footing will be designed to all load combinations. You can specifically assign which combination to consider by checking or unchecking each load combination. Further, you can choose envelope to consider envelope of all combinations. Click Cancel. Import from CSV. 
user-defined columns and column loads can imported from a CSV file. Ensure that column and forces are set up in the format given in the sample file provided. Export to report. Export the footing schedule to standard protostructure report, which contains the same information as shown in the batch design screen. Close the report. Export to Excel. Export the same footing schedule as an Excel file. Detailed design report produce the pad footing detail design report of all the footings. The exported reports will also be automatically saved and available for compilation in the design report manager. Close the report. Design selected will launch the interactive pad footing design for the selected column row. Alternatively, double-click on any of the column label in the list to launch it. Double-click on the second row to launch the detail interactive pad footing. Geometry. Here, you can review or modify the footing depth and size. In the right-hand pane, the 2D diagram of the footing is shown. The actual soil pressure at the edge of the footing is also shown. Green figures means it's pass, while red figure means it is failure. Click 3D tab. The 3D presentation of the footing with rebars will be shown. You can right-click drag to rotate and zoom in by scrolling the mouse wheel. Click back on the 2D view. The design summary below lists down each design check. Similarly, green figures means pass, while red figures mean fail. You can change the footing size to say 2.5 meters by 2.5 meters. The design will be checked instantly and reflected in the design summary below. Further, the actual soil bearing pressure will also update in the 2D diagram. Pad footing eccentricity. You can also enter X or Y eccentricity or click on the preset default icons. Similarly, the design result will auto update. Reset back to center. Pedestal. Check to add a concrete pedestal, which is enlarged stump above the pad footing. LX and LY is the pedestal size. Try entering say 800 by 800. You can input the shear key spacing and depth key for the pedestal. Shear key improves the punching shear and shear capacity. Click on the 3D tab to see the visualization of the pedestal. Zoom in. Uncheck pedestal. Change back to 2D view. Analysis. Material. Reviewer change concrete grade, rebars grade and diameter. Soil properties. Ultimate stress of soil is automatically calculated by multiplying allowable stress and ultimate strength factor from foundation settings. This can be manually input by checking user member specific value. Soil surcharge on footing is auto-calculated by multiplying soil unit weight and fill height. The fill height is auto-calculated based on foundation depth in edit story, minus the footing depth. Subgrade coefficient is used to calculate the spring coefficient when the foundation is analyzed using finite elements method. That is, the footing will be designed as flexible slab resting on soil springs. In foundation settings, we have chosen to use building analysis model, this subgrade setting will be ignored. This means that the pad footing will be designed as rigid footing. Options. Specify general parameters of design and detailing, such as increment steps for footing depth, size, also, some report and detailing options. Column loads. Combination and loads are listed. There are three choices of loads. All combination is the default. This means the same combinations used in column design will be used. Envelope. Means only combination with the highest loads of all combination will be used. User defined. Combination and loads can be user defined by keying values in the table. Select back all load combinations. Rebars. Shows all the design reinforcement bars. Bar sizes and spacing can be changed. If changed, remember to click on another cell to take effect. The design summary dialog will auto-refresh to show pass or fail status. Design. If you want to redesign the footing, select design to automatically design footing depth, size and rebars to the latest settings. Generate report. Generate the detail pad footing design report. Review the report. Close the report. Pick cancel to discard all changes and exit the individual pad footing design dialog. Pick OK to exit the batch footing design dialog. The pad footings will be inserted under the selected columns as shown. Go to the structure tree, click on the pile caps and pad bases folder to expand. The footing will be listed. 
you can select or multiple select the footing on the plan view or in the structure tree. Right click will expose functions such as properties to go back to the footing design menu or delete. Don't select any. Go to drawings and reports tab. Pick pad base and pile cap details. Pad footing drawing with reinforcement view will be created for review. The DWG or DXF drawings must be generated in proto details.